So for part four, I was going to show uh, the actual impeller test bench working for once. So I was going to go through, design a few impellers, look at some data, all that kind of fun stuff. But of course, during the filming process, this ended up happening. Went to pick the boat up and um, yeah. So if you remember back in part two, I actually showed what happened during the printing process. 90% of the weight on the print, there was a power outage that caused me to have to print out the remaining 10% of the print that was left uh, separately and actually glue on the section just to be able to salvage the print that I'd made. So clearly the two-part epoxy wasn't as strong as I thought it was. That's okay though because I actually wanted to redesign the inlets on the jets anyways. So that was my next task. I was out of horrendous yellow, so I picked up some of this beautiful purple filament from Amazon. And I happen to think it looks pretty good with the yellow. So my main goal with this new design was to increase the inlet efficiency. In my last design, the inlets were really small, just one of those small design oversights that you, you don't notice, but end up screwing you in the end. But in the new one, I wanted to have a pretty efficient inlet design so that I could take full advantage of all the power of the motors. So I went with much wider and much longer inlets on both the jets. This also let me fix a few things like inefficiencies in material use and thin walls. So two days and 20 hours of printing later, I had a kind of messy um, 3D print of the third shell, but it had a much, much, much better inlet design. Uh, much bigger, much more beautiful, and it took a little while to clean up, um, just because what ended up happening is, is that the support fell down, and then I had a bit of spaghetti. I let it run anyways, because the rest of it was printing pretty good, but you know what, it actually was okay. It just took me another couple hours of clean up, uh, and I ended up sanding it and making it look kind of pretty. So you can certainly see how much wider I've made these inlets. Uh, compared to the original version, you can see the issues that I was having with those. Um, <laughs> That was the main improvement with this rear here. I don't know why I did that in the first place. But there you go. And then I also increased the size of the jets by about five millimeters and moved them a little lower. Let's see, not by much, but <clears throat> all in all that should help out with most of it. And then on the inside, um, just using a bit more of an efficient design. I think it looks a bit cooler too. Just focus, there you go. Um, and then here, see I was using a bit more simplistic. So here's the new jet design. Two jets like that. And then the old one used to be square like this. Okay, removed all of our little brass inserts. So now I'm gonna put them into the new one. Okay, they're all in two, noise. Okay, so I just added a bit of glue in a lot of these areas here that had divots in them. Um, and that applies to the outside as well. Just to kind of clean it up and then I'll give it a good sand and a fill with the filler. Uh, it looks pretty good. And with only a little bit of struggling, I managed to pry the remaining uh, part of the third section off of the rest of the boat. Just to show you the increase in impeller size, I went and I printed a 40 millimeter version of the 35 mil impellers that I used to have, and you can see that it's actually more significant than I thought it would be. It gives you quite a bit more blade compared to the hub. And I think that that should allow us to take a bit better advantage of the big motors that I have fed to this boat. 
So off camera, I put together the last section to the remaining parts of the boat and sealed it together. Uh, again, I don't do the most beautiful sealing job, so there's some definite black from the sandpaper on there, but it looks okay. So now that it was all together, I had to reassemble the motors and the battery blocks and all the other components that I had to take out because of the failure. And I forgot to record it, but I ended up testing it off camera and it still didn't have the performance I wanted. So I decided it was finally time to bite the bullet and buy some new motors. So these motors are rated up to 12,000 RPM at 12 volts compared to 4,000 RPM. So you can see the new motors on the left uh, and it's got significantly more RPM and it feels like honestly more torque too. New motors installed. Let's see how much she can hump now. Motors are in the boat. Um, these are the new ones and we're gonna put it in and see how good it is. So I'm not gonna do any flow tests right now. I, uh, I'm just seeing what these new motors are like, seeing if I wasted 50 of my Canadian dollars. Oops. Okay. Do it again, do it again. <laughs> I was trying to zoom in on it. Okay. I think that should be good. <laughs> so with the newfound performance of the motors and the rear section, I decided I wanted to reprogram the code so I had control over the throttle during the flow tests. So I did that and I also designed a low pitch impeller and a really high pitch impeller to test. And during this time I also realized that when I installed the motors, I think I overdid the screws a bit and pushed it through the bottom. So I ended up fixing that just by taking my soldering iron and flattening it out. Okay, so here is the setup. We have the boat in the water. It's got, just right now, the medium pitch for impeller on. Um, and yeah, so it's got the two new motors, although we only run one anyways. And we have the new wiring setup going here. So basically, in this new setup, I actually control everything. And then we're using, so we use my controller to actually control the throttle. And then we're getting all of our data through PuTTY on my PC. Okay, so I figured out how to actually prime the pumps. You just gotta give it short bursts in the water flows. Okay, so we're gonna turn on the computer now, turn on the data logging, and uh, give it a test. So this is again was with the medium pitch impeller, so it'll start with, and then I'll do the other two, and we can get three data points just to start out with, just to see which way we want to tune the impeller. So for these clips, I turned down the audio quite a bit. Turns out that having 12,000 RPM spinning with an unbalanced impeller can be quite loud, uh, which will become a little bit more important later on in the video. My neighbors are gonna hate me. <laughs> okay, so that was the end of test one. So essentially I ended up going uh, right till I was seeing stable flow rates. If I scroll down a bit, I'll show you this later in a bit more detail, but once I hit a stable flow rate about 12.5, um, I stopped the throttle, uh, increasing the throttle at all because that seemed to have been the max flow rate for this impeller. So now we're gonna try out these two and see if we do better or worse. 
I had a simple error in the code and now I have to redo all the tests. Oh. Okay, so um, I was retesting some of the impellers and uh, <clears throat> the just regular normal pitch for impeller that I made actually it had so much to work that it uh, loosened this motor uh, coupler. So that's done. And also I just got a knock on my front door, uh, my, my building manager saying, stop doing this. So what I'm going to do instead is for now, we're just going to stick with this normal impeller. It seems to be the most powerful and the data backs that up and we'll look at that in a second. Um, and then in the future, I will open up the impeller, I'll, I'll make a impeller specifications sheet and I'll open it up to all viewers. Anybody can send in their 3D model. I'll print it out and try it. Um, and we'll see, but I'll be doing that all in a lake or a pond because clearly this whole ghetto setup um, is attracting a bit too much attention. So for now, we have to say goodbye to the impeller tester, but hopefully we can do some more tests out at a lake or something like that so my landlord doesn't hate me too much. But that doesn't stop us from looking at the data. So as you can see here, this is the data for impeller 3.0. So you can see that this is the graph versus the throttle percentage and the max value that was obtained by this impeller. This is for impeller 3.1, so this is the more pitched impeller. And you can see that that's the data graph right there and that's the max that was achieved by it. And then this is for the really, uh, I guess you would say low pitch impeller. Um, so that's the max flow rate and this is what the graph looks like here. And then this sheet just shows all of them together on the same graph. So you can see that for impeller 3.0, which is the blue, um, we reached the max maximum flow rate out of all three impellers by a pretty significant margin. So it looks like the more mid-pitch impeller is actually about right for this motor speed. So that's good to know. Um, in the future, I'll definitely be doing more testing because I do really enjoy the process uh, and eventually we'll have lots of graphs and hopefully some designs that have been submitted by you guys. So anyways, the rest of the project moves on. In the next episode, we will be printing out, assembling, programming, and testing the nozzle assemblies and that will pretty much bring us up to the point where we can actually go and give this boat a real test in a lake.